Phenomenological research actually stems from philosophy. Back before World War I, a movement called Phenomenology was started, and it focused on basic human experience as the raw data with which the world could be explained. It didn't start out as a research method, but has since been developed into the study of experiences and people's reactions to phenomena or events in order to find commonalities or themes that, they can, that can then lead to answers. The most important aspect of this type of research to remember is that it relies on the researcher being conscious of their own biases, prejudices, and predispositions, and being able to step back from them and confront their participants' experiences with a clean slate. It's about going into the research without thinking that you know something about it or making assumptions about the topic. It's about solely describing what is happening, and if the researcher goes in with a hypothesis, they're reflecting their own thoughts and opinions on the research, and it's no longer true raw data of experience. This ability to look at things without imposing your own biases on them is called bracketing, and the process of performing research in this manner is called phenomenological reduction, which is highlighted in my work. Later, the recorded experiences can be analyzed and realizations can be formed, but not before. Because this type of research involves in-depth description of very specific experiences, and it's not about finding facts or standards, it's qualitative and can really only be performed on a small scale. However, it's usually performed on a set of test subjects so that themes can be pulled from the analysis, which wouldn't necessarily be possible if only one or two participants' experiences were studied. Basically, phenomenology started with the philosopher Edmund Herschel, and his theories were very strict in regards to the fact that human consciousness and experience could only be completely understood if bias and past life experience was completely removed from the equation. He called this state the life world. Heidegger was forming theories around the same time and generally agreed with Herschel, but believed that just describing the experience wasn't enough, and that experiences needed to be analyzed. Herschel's work and followers later evolved into what is called European phenomenology, which is useful in exploring phenomena itself, and Heidegger's work was eventually adapted to become new phenomenology, sometimes called American, which is more if you want to understand the participants' interactions with the phenomena. The main difference is that in the new style, some biases, such as culture, are accepted as factors in understanding experiences, because researchers here believe that it is impossible to completely remove your mind from these learned roles. Data is gathered through interviews, discussions, telephone conversation, email exchanges, diaries, and in-depth examinations of case studies. Specifically in education, students or teachers' experience can be studied and themes can be found that can create change. On a larger scale, let's say if all teachers in a school were asked to participate in a study about how their students react to creative tasks, they would be doing nothing but recording experience, not making generalizations or conclusions, and the data could then be analyzed to see what commonalities lie in their descriptions and school-wide changes could be made. On a more individual basis, teachers can use this type of research in their classrooms because it forces them to step back, abandon their learned dispositions, and just observe. This makes for better self-reflection, which is always valuable in bettering your teaching practice.